Chadley, you're going to be a great dad. Thank you for being here. I froze. The voice coming from the DVD player felt like a knife to my heart. I stood in Chadley's office, clutching a dust rag, staring at the screen where a woman, bedridden and sweating, gripped the hand of my husband. Oh my God. Is that my husband's voice? I murmured, unable to tear my eyes away. Liz, Helen's voice broke my trance. She stepped into the room, her face a mask of concern. I think you should put this DVD back for now. We'll figure this out. I ejected the DVD, my hands trembling as I placed it back in its case, careful not to look at the printed label that stared back at me. Rachel's baby. Helen closed the office door behind us as we left. When we were in the kitchen, Helen poured two cups of coffee and sat across the table from me. Liz, I know this is shocking, but let's stay calm. We need to understand what's going on. I grasped my cup, trying to draw warmth from it, but it only made the growing chill inside me more apparent. But if it's true, what does it mean for us? Helen sighed, staring into her coffee. We need to find out more before jumping to conclusions. I'll support you, no matter what we discover. She reached out and squeezed my hand, her touch grounding me for a moment. That night, sleep came reluctantly. My mind was a carousel of images. Chadley in the delivery room, his soothing whispers to this woman, Rachel. Part of me wanted to confront him right away, but Helen's words echoed in my mind. We needed answers, and hasty actions wouldn't bring them. In the morning, Helen suggested we hire a private investigator. Liz, you're running your business and dealing with enough stress. Let professionals handle this. You're right. I took a deep breath, feeling the weight on my shoulders, but trying to stay strong. I'll call someone today. By noon, I had an appointment set with Jake Fulton, a private investigator. I want to know everything about Rachel and Chadley's involvement, I told him as we sat in his small office. Jake nodded, his expression one of practiced empathy. We'll get the answers you need. I'll start right away. Over the next few days, Helen and I kept our conversations to necessary topics. Chadley noticed my distant demeanor, but attributed it to my workload. He had no idea about the storm brewing. Jake reported back quickly. Rachel Miller, he began, unfolding what seemed like a saga about my husband's other life. Chadley's frequent business trips, many were visits to her. She lives just two towns over. As the pieces clicked into place, my anger bubbled but stayed controlled. Any sign of another man? I asked, remembering the name Dan from the dossier Jake handed us. Jake nodded. Dan Parker. He believed he was the father of Rachel's child. Helen and I decided we needed to talk to Dan. Maybe he had answers or pieces of the puzzle we still missed. Meeting him at a local diner, the air was thick with tension. Dan, we need to talk about Rachel, I began, feeling a strange camaraderie with this man I had never met. His eyes widened with mixed emotions. What's this about? he demanded. Through shared pain, we pieced together a story of deception. Dan had been as fooled as I was. Together, we planned to confront Rachel and Chadley, two deceivers caught in their web of lies. Helen's eyes gleamed with determination the next morning. We need to set the stage for this revelation properly. I gave a weary smile. Chadley's birthday is coming up. Perfect timing, isn't it? She nodded. Everyone deserves to know the truth, Liz. But how? I asked, the enormity of the task weighing on me. We'll figure it out, Helen assured me, squeezing my hand once more. We have to. The plan was set in motion. Secrets ready to be unveiled, actions poised to shatter our facades. The kitchen table turned into our war room. Helen and I sifted through the evidence Jake had gathered. Photos, receipts, and notes on Chadley's movements painted a picture of betrayal. There's no denying it now, Helen said, her voice steady but eyes glistening with a mix of anger and sadness. We have to face reality. I nodded, clutching a receipt from a fancy hotel I had never visited. It's worse than I imagined. The tears I had been holding back began to fall. Helen reached over, her hand warm and comforting. Liz, don't panic. We need to understand what's going on. Jumping to conclusions won't help. But if it's true, what does it mean for us? I choked out, the enormity of the situation hitting me all at once. Helen took a deep breath. It means we need to be smart about our next steps. You'll take a break from your business. We'll hire a lawyer to protect your interests. My life felt like it was spiraling out of control. I had to keep my composure, not just for myself, but for the future. I still hoped I could rebuild from this mess. 
I trusted Helen's wisdom. She had been a rock and a second mother to me. When nighttime fell, the house felt foreign. Chadley came home, kissed my cheek absent-mindedly, and retreated to his study. I sat stiffly on the couch, trying to act normal. The sound of his laughter on old nights felt like a cruel joke now. The following day I found myself in the polished office of Kim Hathaway, a seasoned family lawyer. Helen joined us for moral support. Liz, tell me what you know so far, Kim prompted, her eyes sharp and attentive. I handed her the folder of evidence we had compiled. I want to know what can be done. I... I think he has another family. Kim's face softened, but her professional demeanor remained intact. First, we'll file for a separation. I'll also get a restraining order if necessary. Let's take it step by step. Her words gave me a sense of direction. What about Rachel? Is there any legal action we can take against her too? Kim leaned back, contemplating. If she's defrauded you and Dan, there might be grounds, but we need irrefutable evidence first. We thanked her and left the office with a clearer plan. My resolve hardened with each step I took. I had lost enough sleep, enough joy. It was time to reclaim some control. Back home, Helen and I reviewed the newly gained information about Dan. The man seemed genuine, as hurt by Rachel's lies as I was. We decided to confront him directly, hoping to form a united front. Meeting Dan had been tense, but oddly cathartic. Joining forces felt like a step toward justice. The next big hurdle was Rachel. We tracked her down to a small cafe she frequented. Helen and I walked in, our presence immediately capturing capturing Reel's attention. Her smile vanished, replaced by a mask of wariness. Rachel, I began, my voice surprisingly steady, we need to talk, now. She hesitated, then nodded, motioning us to a secluded corner. Her discomfort mirrored my own. What do you want? Rachel asked, eyes darting between us. Answers, I replied firmly. We know about Chadley and the child. Her eyes flashed with something. Guilt, fear, perhaps both. I don't know what you think you know, she started. No games, Helen interjected, her voice cold but controlled. We have evidence. Your lies end here. Rachel's shoulders slumped slightly, and I could see the fight leaving her. She realized the game was up. Fine, she said quietly. I'll tell you everything. Her admission felt like a victory, but also a bitter confirmation of our worst fears. The path ahead was clear now. We needed to expose Chadley, and it began with a confrontation that would shake our family to its core. My fingers tapped restlessly on the desk as Jake updated me on the latest findings. The private investigator's office felt suffocating, crammed with files and the scent of stale coffee. Liz, Jake started, adjusting his glasses. We've uncovered more about Rachel. She's been living off Chadley's money. They've also co-signed on an apartment lease. Helen gripped my shoulder, her fury barely concealed. So he's been funding her life while we struggled? Unbelievable. I sank deeper into my chair, feeling a cocktail of betrayal and determination. And Dan? What's his involvement? Jake handed over a series of surveillance photos. Rachel's been stringing him along, making him believe he's the father. He's been covering additional expenses, private school applications, medical bills. Helen's eyes narrowed. Rachel's been playing everyone for fools. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my voice steady. What about business trips? How often did he visit her? More than half, Jake replied, flipping through some documents. She lives in a neighboring town, but they met up during business trips, too. She has proof of their meetings, texts, and emails. Rachel's been smart, Helen muttered, but not smart enough. There was a pause before Jake spoke again. What's the next step for you, Liz? I clenched my fists. I want every detail exposed. Let's talk to the lawyer. That woman, Rachel, she must be held accountable, too. Kim Hathaway's office was as pristine as ever. She listened intently as we described Rachel's manipulations. Liz, Kim began, your situation warrants comprehensive action. We'll start with legal separation from Chadley. Gathering more concrete proof of the fraud will be vital. What about Rachel? I asked. We could potentially charge her with fraud, Kim said, her eyes sharp. But we need irrefutable evidence, I nodded. We have to move fast. Chadley's birthday is approaching. It's the perfect chance to confront them both. Back at home, Helen and I busied ourselves with preparations. I had to act normal around Chadley, which made my skin crawl. Each time he smiled or tried to be affectionate felt like a betrayal all over again. 
The day before Chadley's birthday party, Helen and I met up with Dan. We filled him in on our plan, and he seemed ready for a showdown. You have to confront them at the party, Dan, I said, feeling more like a general than a woman whose life was falling apart. Everyone will be there, family, friends, they need to see the truth. Dan looked grim but determined. I'll be there. The day of the party arrived. Helen and I moved through the motions of hosting as if everything was perfect. Guests filled the living room, laughing and chatting, unaware of the storm brewing. Chadley entered, surprised by the gathering, friends clapping, Helen hugging him. "'Happy birthday!' echoed through the house. I forced a smile, knowing the moment was near. As the cake was being cut, I nodded to Dan, who had positioned himself near the entertainment center. He gave us the signal and quietly inserted the damning DVD. The room darkened as the screen sprang to life. "'Liz, what the hell are you doing?' Chadley's voice was sharp, cutting through the room's cheerful atmosphere. "'Silence! Chadley, watch!' Helen demanded, her voice steady even as my heart pounded in my chest. Gasps filled the room as the video played. Chadley's comforting coos to Rachel, as she pushed through labor, his gentle touch that had once been reserved for me, now public for everyone to see. The shockwaves of revelation rippled through the assembly. Family members whispered, friends looked horrified. I stepped forward, feeling strength surge through my veins. This is who Chadley really is, I declared, living a double life, with Rachel, who stole your trust and love, Dan. Dan stepped up, his voice resolute. We have proof of their betrayal. DNA tests show Chadley isn't the father. Rachel lied. The room descended into chaos, but in the middle of it, I felt an unexpected calm. The lies were exposed, and the path to justice had begun. The room was a cauldron of confusion and disbelief. Chadley's face turned ashen, beads of sweat forming on his brow as he locked eyes with me. Liz, you had no right. Save it, I snapped, my voice slicing through his excuses. You lied to all of us. Helen stood beside me, her presence a fortress of support. This has to stop, Chadley. You've hurt too many people. Dan stepped forward, his eyes burning with betrayal. Rachel, we need to talk. About everything. Rachel's eyes darted around the room, looking for an escape. Dan, I can explain. Explain? Dan's voice was sharp. You used me. Lied to me. Chadley tried to regain control of the situation. Everyone, please, let's not make a scene. Too late for that, Helen interjected. You made your choices. Rachel finally found her voice, though it trembled. I never intended for anyone to get hurt. Stop, stop lying, I shouted, feeling my emotions surge. All you did was lie. Rachel turned to Dan, tears streaming down her face. Dan, please, I need you to believe me. He shook his head, disgust shaping his features. You're poison, Rachel, to everyone you touch. Relatives and friends began to whisper, their faces masked in a mix of shock and disgust. No one seemed to side with Chadley or Rachel. It was clear their deceit had dug their own graves. Trying to salvage a shred of dignity, Chadley approached me. Liz, can we talk privately? I took a step back, crossing my arms. There's nothing to talk about, not anymore. Helen raised a hand, signaling for silence. Everyone deserves to know what kind of people Chadley and Rachel are. There should be no secrets left to fester. Seeing he had no allies, Chadley's desperation grew. Liz, please, I'm begging you. Begging is for the guilty, I stated coldly. And you're as guilty as they come. Dan wasn't any more forgiving. Rachel, I'm suing you. Fraud, emotional distress, the works. Rachel collapsed into a chair, finally defeated. I never meant for it to go this far. Helen's eyes were filled with steely determination. Maybe you should have thought of that before betraying everyone you claimed to care about. The room fell into a strained silence, the enormity of the situation starting to settle. Chadley and Rachel looked around, sat finding only judgment and disdain. Helen and I nodded to each other, an unspoken understanding passing between us. I'm filing for divorce. I announced, the finality of the words echoing in the stillness. You're no longer part of my life. Chadley's shoulders slumped. He realized that not only had he lost me, but also the respect of everyone gathered. Lenough, I said, turning away from him. This is over. With a final glance, Helen and I began to escort our guests out, thanking them for coming and apologizing for the scene. The weight of relief mixed with sorrow felt surreal. As the door closed behind the last guest, Helen looked at me. We did it, Liz. It's done. I nodded, feeling a tear slide down my cheek. 
Thank you for standing by me, Helen. I wouldn't have survived this without you. Helen hugged me tightly. We're family, and we're stronger than ever. Inside I knew there were more battles ahead. Legalities, emotional wounds, and rebuilding my life without Chadley. But for now, the first and most important step had been taken, facing the truth head-on and refusing to live a lie. Dan approached us before leaving. We're in this together now, he said, holding out his hand. I shook it. Thank you, Dan, for everything. He nodded, grim but resolute. We'll get through this, all of us. As I closed the door, I felt a strange mix of exhaustion and newfound strength. Tomorrow would bring new challenges, but for tonight, I was content, knowing the truth had finally seen the light. The shadows were lifting, and with them, the promise of a better future. The days leading up to the confrontation were a blur of preparations. Helen and I decided Chadley's upcoming surprise birthday party would be the perfect moment to unveil the truth. We needed to ensure that everyone who mattered was there. So, how do we do this? I asked Helen one afternoon, as we sorted through the guest list. Simple, she said, tapping the list with a pen. We gather everyone together and play the DVD. The shock will do the rest. The plan was set. Chadley's birthday morning was oddly tranquil. I prepared a light breakfast, trying to act like everything was normal. Chadley, blissfully unaware, joked about his age and what a wonderful wife I was. My smile was tight, but he didn't notice. Don't forget, we've got that dinner tonight, I said, hiding the tremor in my voice. Wouldn't miss it for the world, Chadley said with a wink. His affection felt like acid on my skin. The evening arrived, and the house filled with guests. Relatives and close friends chatted, unaware of the drama about to unfold. I spotted Dan lingering near the doorway, and we exchanged nods of encouragement. As we gathered in the living room, I caught Helen's eye. She nodded subtly. Time to set the stage. Thank you all for coming, Helen announced, smiling warmly. We have a special surprise for Chadley. He beamed, looking around at everyone. You guys shouldn't have. You deserve it, I said, my words double-edged. Helen moved to the TV, inserting the dreaded DVD. As the screen lit up, Chadley looked confused. His confusion turned to horror as Rachel's face appeared, contorted in labor. The room fell silent, all eyes glued to the damning footage. What is this? Chadley's voice shook, a mix of anger and panic creeping into his tone. Keep watching, Helen commanded, her voice icy. The video continued, showing Chadley's intimate moments with Rachel. Gasps filled the room, whispers of disbelief spreading like wildfire. Liz, turn this off. This is a mistake, Chadley pleaded, but I shook my head. No mistakes here, Chadley. Just the truth. Rachel, who had timidly stood at the back, now stepped forward, head bowed. I'm sorry, everyone. Dan pushed to the front, fury etched on his face. You think sorry fixes this? You destroyed lives, Rachel. Chadley's face twisted with desperation. Liz, please, we can talk about this. Helen stepped in front of me, shielding me from his reach. You've done enough talking, Chadley. It's time everyone knew who you really are. The guests were no longer whispering. Outright exclamations of anger and betrayal echoed through the room. Chadley looked around, realizing no one was on his side. No more lies, I said firmly. This marriage is over. I want a divorce. Chadley's shoulders slumped in defeat. He looked at Rachel, who was crying. Rachel, how could you? Rachel looked up her eyes red and swollen. I never meant to hurt anyone, Chadley, Dan scoffed. Too late for that. You hurt all of us. Helen, ever the matriarch, faced the crowd. Now you all know the truth. These two have betrayed us. The only thing left is justice. The room was filled with a mix of redemption and sorrow. It was the end of an era for our family, but also a new beginning. Chadley and Rachel stood there, exposed and broken. I watched as the last few guests left, unable to shake the sense of finality hovering in the air. Helen turned to me, her eyes filled with both sadness and relief. We did what needed to be done, she said softly. I nodded, feeling the weight of our actions, but also an unexpected lightness. The truth was out. Now we could begin to heal. We'll get through this, Liz, Dan said, placing a reassuring hand on my shoulder. All of us. Helen gave me a tight hug. We're here for each other now. Always. As I closed the door on that harrowing evening, I felt a strange sense of peace. The storm had passed, and the path ahead, though difficult, was clear. The aftermath of the confrontation hung heavy in the air. Chadley and Rachel were in shambles, their charades demolished. The room had emptied, 
but the echo of their deceit lingered. Liz, let's talk, Chadley pleaded, his face an agonized mask. Please, give me a chance to explain. There's nothing left to explain, I said coldly, my voice steadier than I felt. It's over. I'm filing for divorce. He grabbed my arm, desperation tinging his touch. You can't just end us like this. We've been through so much. Helen stepped forward, prying his hand off me with a firm grip. Don't you dare touch her, Chadley. You're not welcome here anymore. Chadley's eyes narrowed, anger bubbling beneath the surface. You always took her side, even when she was wrong. Helen didn't flinch. I stood by what was right. Clearly, that wasn't you. Rachel stood to the side, sniffling and wiping tears. She eyed Dan, hoping for some sympathy. Dan, I'm so sorry. Please, we can work this out. Dan's face was etched with betrayal and fury. Rachel, there's nothing left to work out. You lied to me, to everyone. I'm suing you for fraud. You should get a lawyer. Rachel collapsed into a chair, her sobs growing louder. I never meant for it to go this far. I watched the scene unfold, feeling an odd mix of vindication and sorrow. The damage was done, and all that was left was to move forward. Chadley turned to me with pleading eyes. Liz, please, let's not do this. Think about us, our memories, everything we've built. Everything we built was a lie, I said, my voice thick. There's no going back. He sank to his knees, head in his hands. I'll never forgive myself for this. Helen's gaze was steely. Good. You shouldn't. Dan, weary but resolute, shook his head. Chadley, Rachel, whatever you hope to salvage, it's gone. You did this to yourselves. It was a strange sight, seeing Chadley, once so composed, now crumbling before me. The room felt too small, filled with the weight of our shattered lives. Helen took my hand, guiding me away from the wreckage. We have preparations to make, she said softly. This is just the beginning. The next few days were a whirlwind of legal meetings and paperwork. Kim Hathaway guided us meticulously through the process, ensuring I was protected. Dan was relentless in his pursuit of justice against Rachel. We need to finalize the DNA tests, Kim instructed. Dan, if this goes to court, we need irrefutable proof. Dan nodded, a hardened look settling on his face. We will. Throughout the ordeal, Helen remained my rock. You're doing the right thing, Liz. We'll come out stronger. One evening, we sat in the living room, the silence thick between us. I finally voiced the question that had been haunting me. Helen, do you think I'll ever feel normal again? She wrapped an arm around my shoulders. Normal might look different, but yes, you will find peace again. Finally, the day came for Chadley to move out. His presence felt ghostly as he packed, casting hollow glances around our home. He tried to speak, but I cut him off. Save your breath, Chadley. There's nothing you can say that will change this. As he walked out the door, bags in hand, a heavy silence filled the space he left behind. Helen and I sat together, the vast emptiness of the house wrapping around us. We survived this, Helen said quietly, and we're stronger for it. Yeah, I agreed, staring out the window at the departing figure of my former husband. We are. The road to healing would be long, but I knew I wasn't alone. With Helen and Dan by my side, we faced the future, with a resilience forged in the fires of betrayal, and together we would rebuild, brick by brick, into something unbreakable. The court was oppressive, with its cold walls and judgmental air. Rachel sat at one of the tables, looking fragile and defeated. Her once confident demeanor had vanished, replaced by a haunting vulnerability. I watched her, feeling a peculiar mix of pity and wrath. Kim stood beside me, her confidence a balm to my frayed nerves. This won't be easy, Liz, she said quietly, but it's necessary. Dan sat across from us, his posture straight, his face a mask of determination. We exchanged a nod, an unspoken pact of solidarity. Today was the day we held Rachel and Chadley accountable. The judge entered, and the court came to order. Rachel's lawyer rose, attempting a defense soaked in rationalizations. Your Honor, he began, my client deeply regrets her actions. She never intended for things to spiral out of control. Her intent was not deceit, but desperation. Dan's lawyer, a stern woman named Grace, stood elegantly. Intent does not negate impact, Your Honor. Rachel Miller knowingly deceived multiple parties, causing emotional and financial damage. Rachel's lawyer continued to plead her case. Rachel was under immense stress. She believed she was providing for her child. Grace interjected, By defrauding two men and emotionally scarring numerous people? That's hardly justifiable. 
The judge nodded thoughtfully before turning to Rachel. Miss Miller, do you have anything to say? Rachel stood shakily, eyes darting between us. I... I'm truly sorry. I know I hurt people, but I was scared. I didn't know what else to do. Dan's voice cut through the court with icy precision. You didn't know what to do. How about telling the truth? Rachel's eyes filled with tears. Dan, you have to believe me. I was lost. Lost? Dan's anger was palpable. You were selfish. You used us. Helen squeezed my hand under the table, her presence steadying me. Kim remained focused, her eyes locked on Rachel. Chadley's turn came, as he had to testify regarding his involvement. He walked up to the stand, his once confident demeanor now shattered. Mr. Monroe, were you aware of Miss Miller's deceit? Grace asked. Chadley swallowed hard, looking down. Not fully, no. I was led to believe I was the father of her child. Grace's gaze was unrelenting. So you claim ignorance? He nodded slightly. I, yes. Dan's face contorted with fury. You're a liar, Chadley. The judge raised a hand. Order in the court. Kim took her turn. Mr. Monroe, you claim you were ignorant, yet you continued to maintain a relationship with Miss Miller. How do you explain that? Chadley shifted uncomfortably. I thought I was doing the right thing. And your wife? Kim pressed on. Did she deserve the lies? He had no answer, his silence speaking louder than any words could. The judge looked at Chadley with disdain. Mr. Monroe, your actions were not justifiable. As testimonies wrapped up, the judge took a moment before delivering the verdict. In light of the evidence and the profound deceit involved, I find Rachel Miller guilty of fraud and emotional distress. Custody of the child will be reevaluated. Chadley Monroe's involvement, while not fully complicit, played a crucial role in the damages caused. The courtroom's tension broke slightly with murmurs of approval. Dan looked relieved, though still burdened by the ordeal. Helen gave my hand a final squeeze. Justice, she whispered. Outside the courtroom, Dan approached me. We did it, Liz. We stood up for ourselves. I nodded, finally feeling a semblance of closure. Yes, we did. Chadley walked past us, eyes downcast. He stopped briefly as if to say something, but then continued walking away without a word. Rachel was taken into custody, leaving behind a mess of shattered lives. Despite the relief of justice, a lingering sadness remained. The damage was done, the wounds deep. Helen, Dan, and I walked out together, finding solace in unity. We'll heal, Helen said, her voice a promise. Dan added, we have each other now. We'll get through this. As we stepped into the fresh air, I felt a weight lift. The path to recovery was long, but I was no longer walking it alone. The shadows of betrayal had been cast off, replaced by a newfound strength and the support of those who mattered most. The weeks following the court verdict felt like emerging from a long, dark tunnel. Helen, Dan, and I started to piece our lives back together, slowly but surely. One afternoon, Helen and I sat in the living room, sorting through old photo albums. The pictures felt like relics from a different era. Look at this, she said, holding up a picture of Chadley and me on our wedding day. You looked so happy. I sighed, taking the photo from her. It feels like a lifetime ago, but I'm grateful for where we are now. Same here, Helen replied, her eyes softening. We have each other, and that's what matters. Just then, my phone rang. It was Kim Hathaway. Liz, I wanted to update you on the custody hearing for Rachel's child. My heart raced. What's the news? Dan has been granted temporary custody, Kim said. We need to ensure the child's well-being during this period. That's great news, I said, relief washing over me. Dan will be thrilled. After hanging up, I called Dan immediately. He picked up on the first ring. Hey, Liz, what's up? I'm calling with good news. You've been granted temporary custody. Dan exhaled deeply, the weight of the past months visible in his voice. Thank you, Liz. This means a lot. Later that day, Dan came by with his son, little Jake. The boy clutched a toy car, eyes wide with curiosity. Hey, Jake. This is Aunt Liz, Dan introduced. Hi, Jake, I said, kneeling to his level. Want to see a cool toy room? Jake nodded enthusiastically and disappeared upstairs with Helen, leaving Dan and me alone in the kitchen. Liz, I can't thank you enough for everything, Dan began, his voice filled with gratitude. We're in this together, I replied. How are you holding up? Better, knowing Jake's with me, he said, running a hand through his hair. But there's still a lot to figure out. Helen returned, smiling. Jake's enjoying the toys. He's got a lot of questions, though, Dan chuckled. That's Jake for you. 
As the evening progressed, we shared stories and laughter, a stark contrast to the turmoil we'd faced. It felt like the start of something new, something hopeful. A few days later, a letter arrived in the mail. It was from Chadley. My hands shook slightly as I opened it, bracing myself for whatever it contained. Liz, I know I'm the last person you want to hear from, but I need you to understand how sorry I am. I've lost everything because of my own actions, my wife, my integrity, and the respect of everyone I care about. I don't deserve forgiveness, but I hope you find peace in knowing that I deeply regret all I've done. Chadley, I read the letter twice, processing his words. Helen found me in the kitchen, the letter clenched in my hand. What's that? she asked gently. A letter from Chadley, I said, passing it to her. Helen read it and looked up, her eyes thoughtful. He's trying to make amends in his own way. Too little too late, I replied. But at least he acknowledges his mistakes. That's something, Helen agreed. But we have more important things to focus on now. We spent the evening planning activities for Jake, making sure Dan felt supported in his new role as a single father. The sense of family grew stronger, weaving its threads tighter around us. In the weeks that followed, we established new routines and created new memories. Dan and Jake became regular fixtures at our home, filling the space with laughter and warmth. One night, as we gathered for dinner, Dan raised his glass. To new beginnings, and to the family we found in each other. To us, Helen and I echoed, clinking our glasses together. As I looked around the table, I felt a profound sense of gratitude. We had survived our darkest days and emerged stronger, bonded by resilience and the promise of a brighter future. The scars would fade, but the strength we found in each other would remain forever.